what are we going to get into today? Well, this ought to be pretty interesting. Here's a clue. Let me show you what I got down here. I got a whole bunch of fresh corn on the cob. Uh, I actually got four dozen ears of corn here. We are going to make some fresh sweet corn liquor. This ought to be pretty fantastic. Okay, so what do I got to do to get started? Well, but first things first, welcome to Stillworks in Brewing. My name is Randy and this is a channel that's all about home distillation and brewing. All right, let's get started. All right, one of the first things I'm going to have to do is I got to cut a whole bunch of corn off the cob. And that's what I'm going to do. Um, so this will be a lot of work. And one thing I want to make sure that I do is I'm not going through the cob way because I, I got something planned for all the cobs. Uh, that's going to be a future video. I think I'll, I'll get them done and I'll throw them in the freezer until I'm ready for them. Uh, it'll be pretty interesting for what I do with the cobs. Okay, but this is going to be a fresh, fresh uh, sweet corn. Liquor, corn liquor, yeah, almost forgot. Okay, so let me uh, let me get these ready, and then uh, I'll be back. Okay. One done. Hey, one thing I was just curious about is how much corn do you get off of a standard, I don't know what, an eight inch cob of corn? You get almost a half a pound. Almost a half a pound of corn off of one cob. All right. Let, let me get to work and uh, we'll go, go from here. Okay? Alright, welcome back to Stowers and Brewing. Um, the day I cut the corn and all, I just didn't, I ran out of time and didn't have enough time to uh, finish up this mash. So what I ended up doing was I took all the corn and put it in these containers and I threw it in the freezer just to keep it fresh because I wanted to make sure it was nice and fresh. Uh, and I let it all out, or almost all out. So, uh, I did, like I did tell you before, I did stick all the cobs in a in the freezer. We're going to use them on a later video. It'll be really interesting. Something I've been working on. Uh, let's see. All right. So what I ended up doing is uh, I used, I wanted 16 pounds of fresh corn. So I cut, it took me about 38 years of corn to get my 16 pounds of cut corn. So. Let's get started making this mash and we'll finish this up. Alright, so what we need to do is I got my blender, food process, whatever blender I guess you call it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the corn in here with a little bit of water. I'm going to chew it up and we're going to put it in the pot, okay? Uh, what else? Alright, let's get that done and then uh, 
we'll move on from there, okay? Alright, and I'm sorry about the noise outside, it is pouring down rain. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to mix some of this corn in here. I don't try to make it a big old mess. A little bit of frozenness to it, so I guess that ain't going to much matter. I mean, it sure does smell like good corn. Yeah, put that much in there. We'll add a little bit of water just to help the job in here. Alright, watch it. Be careful of the noise. What's going wrong? There we go. I just want to fluff that corn up. Alright, just a good, good looking corn. Alright. This won't take too awful long. help the cooking process. Alright, let me get these finished up and then I'll be back. Okay, so I got all my corn is uh, blended up, chewed up, it's in my pot, I got a small fire under it, okay, I'm going to add me a little bit of water just to get the liquid up just a little bit, and then uh, what I want to do is I want to heat this up to, I don't know, somewhere above 190, I don't really want to boil it though, so I'm going to say about 190 to 200 degrees, and then once I get up there, I'm going to turn the heat off, put a lid on it, and uh, I'm going to let it sit for an hour and a half. Okay, but there's going to be some steps in between there. Okay, so let me show you what I got. Alright, so there's, um, there's my corn in there. Alright, that should be enough liquid. Well, So what I want to do is I'm going to heat this up and I want, to, I want to make sure that I stir it as it's heating because I do not want to scorch any of that uh, delicious corn in the bottom of the pot. Now this is a clad pot which means there's it's a uh, piece of metal in the bottom of this pot that's made into it. It does help from scorching. So. Alright, so let me bring this up to temperature, then uh, we'll be back. Okay, I got my corn up to 200 degrees, and, I, and you stir constantly. Uh, 
because you sure don't want to uh, scorch that corn because you can't get the taste out. It tastes terrible. Okay, so what's next? Well, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, put a lid on this, let it start to cool down. And once it gets a little bit below 190, I can add in some high temperature enzymes to start breaking the uh, starches over into sugars. And I'm going to let her sit for an hour and a half. All right, and then after that, uh, if I keep checking on the temperature, once it gets to um, ah, about 160, I'm going to add in five pounds of uh, six row barley to help convert all the sugars or starches over into sugars. And then uh, we'll go from there. So, okay, so let me get a lid on this and then uh, move back in there. And okay, so let's. Uh, Check our temperature, and it's looking like 187, 89. I'm gonna give her a few more minutes to, to cool down. Maybe if I just stir it a little bit. Let's check out and see what our temperature is. Give it a little bit of stir. And we are looking at 170, 175. Okay. I got some high temperature enzyme here. And according to the directions, I use two teaspoons per five gallons. Okay, so I'm going to use. I'll put two in there. One, two. Okay. Give that a little stir. So when that's down to about 160 degrees, I'm gonna add in my uh, milled barley, and then. Uh, We'll give it some more time to to uh, convert all them starches into sugars. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, it's been an hour and a half. Let's check our temperature. And our temperature is one one sixty, one fifty eight, one sixty, maybe one sixty two in some places. All right, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I got five pounds of six row barley. And by the time I stir this in, I mean you can look, that's getting thin. By the time I stir this in, it's gonna be the right temperature. I mean, I'm looking for uh, 158, somewhere in that neighborhood. I just stir this in nice and slow. So the six root barley, that flavor, plus it's, I'm, I'm using the enzymes that are in there to help convert all that uh, corn over. Uh, I did, I'm, I'm going to double check, let me get this stirred in, I'm going to double check my temperature. Check my temperature, and it is 150, 153. I don't know if you can see it. 153. So that's going to be about perfect. I'm going to put the lid on it, and we'll let that sit for an hour and a half. Okay, so let's check, let's make sure that our conversion did take place. How do we do that? Well, we're going to do that with iodine tincture. I think I said that right. Okay, so what we need to do is get a little bit of a sample from our mash. Okay. 
Okay, so all you got to do is you got a little sample. Can you see it? Yeah. Put a drop or so in there. Right? And if you shake it around, see how it pretty much went right back to the original color? That means that there is no starch present. So that means the conversion did take place. Another thing you can do too, right, is another thing you do, put your clear it. It's real sweet. So that means it's loaded up with sugar, and that's just what we need. Okay, so let me get set up, and we're going to start to uh, straighten the uh, grains out of this, okay? So I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to use my bottling, or my uh, sieve bucket system, which is I got a mesh bag in a bucket with a lot of holes drilled into it. So then, once I put the grains into the mesh bag, it will drain through into a bottling bucket and then come out the uh, spout on the bottom of that into my fermentation bucket okay and then that will leave all of my solids behind Okay, so what we're attempting to do is we want to flush all the sugars from these grains. So I just got some cool water here, and I'm going to mix it up in these grains. And stir it, and we're just going to try to uh, flush them sugars out. Sugars and flavor. Draining. I often get a question asked, well, how much water did you use? Well, my short answer is I use enough water until I collect six gallons of a, of a clean mash in my bucket. And if I use the six gallons, that gets me to the right of um, what my mash size is because I'm making a six gallon mash. So that's how I do that. Like I said, I'll flush these grains, and when I collect six gallons, I got it, and then all I gotta do is wait for it to cool down, and uh, I can pitch my yeast. Um, sometimes what I'll do too is if, if the mash is a little bit low in the numbers, I could add a little bit of uh, sugar just to boost the numbers up, because I got all that corn flavor in there. So uh, we'll find out about that in a little bit. Forage all our grains over. Let's take a little sample. Let's see what we're, what kind of numbers we're getting. And I am looking, actually it's going to be a little bit on the low side. If I can see it. There we go. One point oh four oh. Alright, one point oh four oh. What I'm going to do, is I'm going to I'm going to mix a little bit of sugar with that. I'm going to boost my numbers up just a little bit. I guess next time I might have to use a little bit. Of, and we're at 100 degrees. 
So let me, uh, these four pounds, let's mix this four pounds of sugar in there. At 100 degrees, that's going to melt that sugar. Let's see what we got now. Now we have. That's 1.085. I'm going to leave it right there. That's perfect for me. 1.085. Alrighty. Well, there's our sweet corn mash. Uh, hindsight, I would have used a little bit more corn than I did. Uh, what was it? Uh, 16 pounds. Uh, next time, I'm going to go a little bit more on the sweet corn. But it's going to taste very good. That is our sweet, our fresh sweet corn mash. Okay, uh, that'd do it for this video. Uh, part two will be fermentation and distillation. Okay, so I guess uh, last thing I got to say is, hey, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next time here on Still Works and Brewing. Cheers, everybody. That's gonna be good.